in the midst of the darkness of the moment. In this time of illness and devastation, we must understand who God really is and what God really does. And when things are so dark, they are beyond us. We have to realize He is still the light of the world. And so we find our world in a time of dismal darkness. But it's good for us to know that He's still the light. And as gloomy as things may seem right now, we serve a God that's still able to bring light to a dark situation. We serve a God that every day it gets a little brighter yeah. and a little brighter. Yeah. We serve a God that is still the light of the world. We serve a God that said as long as I am in the world, there will be light, for I am the light of the world. So in the midst of all this darkness, let's stay hopeful.
problems keep you. God, I know that you're awesome. And because you're awesome, God, you let us see this Sunday morning. And God, we bless you. We thank you. And we love you. And God, because we still do things that don't please you, God, you sent your son to pay the ultimate price that we might be able to see you for ourselves face to face. We bless you, we love you, and we thank you. It's in your daughter and son Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen.
too hard for our God. And in the midst of this pandemic, you were said, and it might be, that I call by my name when I would themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. God, you said, then will they hear from hell?
любовью проявляли руку. Красно вот еще. Сан-Джан. Сан-Джан, да. Beginning at verse number one, the word of God says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And we had thus spoken. He spat upon the ground and made a clay of spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpreted sin. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which were before him, had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he? that said, I'm dead. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. I want to talk about the essential work of Jesus. All right, all right. The essential work of Jesus. In the last few months, we have heard the term essential workers. By definition, essential means absolutely necessary or extremely important. It is fundamentally the central of the nature of something or someone. Whenever something is essential, it is absolutely necessary and extremely important. In this COVID season, we have seen people that are working as first responders have been called essential. And I agree that they are essential. I agree that we need the first responders, and I agree that we need the nurses and the doctors, and all of those that work in the medical field, I believe we need them because they are essential workers. Well, when I look at the Word of God, I find the original essential work by the name of Jesus. In our text today, we discover an account of Jesus. We find Jesus here in the role of an essential work. The Bible says to us in this text today that Jesus Jesus runs into a situation. Our text today will reveal to us the situation as it plays out. The situation that before Jesus, Jesus runs into a miserable man. A miserable man. But it is good to know that the miserable man, the miserable man can run into a merciful master. Not only can you run into a merciful master if you're a miserable man, but you will find a God that has a money miracle just for you. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. Our opening verse, number one, when we look at the miserable man, it says, Jesus passed by. Just where he was passing by in our text is 
not steal. But just to know that Jesus will pass by. The location is not important. The geographical location is not important. It's just good to know that he passed by. I wish I had some help. I, I don't know about you. I'm glad he passed by. Where I was. I'm, I, I'm glad he still passes by. Where I am. This man was in misery, but Jesus passed by. Any of y'all ever been in misery? And Jesus passed by. The text revealed to us that Jesus passed by. It also said that as he passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Jesus saw this man that was blind from his birth. When, when we look at the miserable condition that this man was in, it said that he was blind from his birth. Yeah. Look at the misery that he must have lived with, never being able to see what we have seen. Right now, yeah. Never being able to see the blueness of the sky. Yeah. The rain and sun that comes up every day and the moon that comes out at night. Yeah. Yeah. This man had not even seen his mother's face. Uh -huh. This man had no idea the beauty that arose for uh -huh. This man was miserable. We discover that in the misery of this, the text said, but Jesus saw him. Yeah, yeah. The interpretation of that word when it said Jesus saw him, it gives us an indication that Jesus was intrigued and interested in the man. Yeah, right. yeah. He cared for the man. He was concerned about the man. He had compassion for the man. I, I don't know about you, I, I, I know in the text it appears that we only see the physical blind. But I have to reveal to us this morning, a lot of us have been blind. We were spiritually blind. You, you were blind when you were all up in the club talking about the roof, the roof is on fire. You were blind. You, you were blind when you were gin and tonic and, and tequila sunrise. You were blind. Y'all ain't working, man. You were walking the dog. You were blind when, when, when you, you, you were blind. But, but Jesus saw you. I wish I had some help. He was concerned about this man that he saw. This man was miserable. Not, not, not only was he miserable in verse number one, but we see after miserable misery continues. Because in verse number two, it says, And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did see? The man that he was born blind or did his parents see? The disciples had also an interest in the man. I see misery had a way of people anticipating knowing what your problem is. Compound misery. You, you remember Job when Job was going through his time of trouble. His friends came to him. And they said, Job, just tell us what sin you have done. Job had done in his sin, but because he was going through, there were those that kept his memory by saying, we know you've done sin. Can I get a witness? You know church folks still doing it right now. And, and you get to going through something. I thought they were holier than that. I thought they were saver than that. But sometimes as you're going through your misery, Sometimes you never meet the merciful master if you don't go through misery. This man was going through misery. And the disciples wanted to know, they wanted to know, because they asked him, saying, Master, who do you see? This man or his parents that he was born blind. The belief of the time was that if someone was going through a physical suffering, it was an ideal that they had done some kind of sin. They believed this man had suffered because either he had gone through sin or his parents had sinned, and that was the only reason that this man was suffering. They believed that some sin had been committed by, by the man or by the parents, or otherwise this sin wouldn't be taking place in blindness. But there's a question. 
to live for us? How can a man sin before he is born? How, how can you sin before you were ever born? How is it? At that particular time, there were those in the Jewish persuasion that believed that God had foreseen that this man was going to be a sin, and so he made him blue alive. Good God of mine. Can, can you see God now before you were born? Before you were born, had God charged you, knowing what you were going to do, what kind of shape would we all be in? Had God charged me, knowing what I was going to do, I would have came out the womb or to the penitent. Had God charged me, before I came out the womb, there was no telling what the charges would have been before I came out of the womb. So we see the mirroring of the blinds. We see the mirroring of the opinion of those that were around him. And I need to tell you that we live in a culture that's blind. Yeah. Prejudice makes you blind. Discrimination makes you blind. It yeah. makes you blind. Yeah. Whenever you become judgmental, yeah. you're blind. Yeah. Let me hang out there right a minute. Yeah. On that judge Miller. Because the church, we, we, we show judge Miller. We, we, we'll take a little bit of truth and mix it up with a whole lot of friction and fracture that, and try to make it be something that is not really ill. But, but I thank God he don't work like that. You're not careful in the church. You'll fool around here and understand misery. This man was miserable. Are y'all praying with me? Disciple wanted to know, Lord. Who did sin? <laughs> See, folks ain't just trying to get this thing on the floor. They want to know who <laughs> sin. Did this man sin before he was born? Did you foresee his sin and cause him to suffer lives? But what did the more ragged parents that he had? <laughs> that sin. Before he got here. And in the midst of this misery that this man was going through, I thank God for verses three through five. Because we find this merciful master speaks of. This is what Jesus said in verse number three. Jesus now said, Me. Have this man sinned, nor his plan, but that the work of God should be made manifest. Him. That word manifest in the text means I'm going to show you what I'm working with. Can I get a witness? How are we all glad right now that when people see you, the manifestation of Jesus is in your life? Oh, listen, they know what you used to be. They, they know your record better than you know your record. And folks be Googling you trying to find out what's going on with you. But aren't you glad that he This man is blind. But, but the reason why this man is blind is, is, is because there's a work that, that, that God needs to manifest in you. Can I tell you something? When the Lord went to work on you, and when God started doing some things in your life, see, folks get messed up with your work that God is doing in your life. Some folks still don't want you to say. Some, some folks still don't want God working in your life. And that's why they try to work on your nerve. And when folks are trying to work on your nerve, you got to let God work in your life. Yeah. You know how it is. Folks still be trying to teach you all. You, you know how it is. Folks be trying to get you all riled up and stirred up and trying to see if you really say you got all the Holy Ghost you got. You, you know how it is. They better be glad you got. Y'all come on work with me. How do y'all laugh and he holds you? How do you hold you? You would have been a rock. Thank God for the merciful master. Verse number three, Jesus said, Neither this man has sinned nor his friend, but that the work of God must be made manifest in him. What 
what Jesus was talking about. When he was talking about the work of God, he was talking about the opportunity that God was getting ready to use upon this man. The opportunity to show some compassion. The opportunity to prove his power. The opportunity to demonstrate that God cares about a man, whatever condition he's in. Amen. That's something the church can learn. We, we can learn. Because sometimes when people come to the church with a condition, we come to a conclusion. But whenever God sees somebody with a condition, he shows compassion. Are y'all with me? See, see, we conclude sometimes by, boy, oh, ain't nothing to them. They ain't going to be saying, wait a minute. They just did it with a condition. You don't forgot you had a condition. Because prior to being saved, you had a condition. We, we like to talk about sins, and we really like to talk about the one that wasn't doing sin. We were good at it. I wish I had that sin. This man, this man, Jesus, the master, has to do a work in him. This is merciful master. I thank God for the mercy that he shows us. We don't even deserve it, but he still shows and gives us mercy. This merciful master, as he deals with this miserable man, he's sent to work. Of our Lord is saying. Yeah. He said, I must work the work of him that sent me. Yeah. While this day of my come. Yeah. And no man can work. All right. All right. Oh, y'all still have to yeah. yeah. Listen to the merciful master. All right. All right. He said, I must work yeah. the work of him that sent me. Yeah. This word sent in the text. God sent Jesus. He had to come into the world. That was the mission that God gave him, was to come into the world. He came as Jesus, but he was God. Yeah. Come on now. He came as Jesus, but he was God. Came as Jesus, but he was God. And just a couple of verses ago, when the question was, who sent? This man or his man. Because he came as God, he came all knowing. Not only did he know the man, but he knew the man's parents. He, he knew them completely. He knew them inside out. He, he knew everything about them. What they could hide from us, they couldn't hide from him. I, I'm talking about the essential work of Jesus. He came in the presence, and the reason why he came, he came to do a work that God had called him to do. Are oh, y'all praying with me? You, you ought to be so glad that, that, that God came to do a work in your life. You, you ought to be so glad that the sin in your life didn't leave God unemployed. The sin in your life didn't leave God without power. The sin in your life don't call Jesus to be fertile when things ain't going the way you want to go. I know that you can't make a Holy Ghost song. You cannot look. Thank God. For this mercy. Master. Now you won't lie to what I mean, my religion now. That wasn't nothing. Because you just can't make a Holy Ghost You might can lay your religion down, but I tell you right now, when you have received the power of the Holy Ghost,
the master is concerned about what takes place with us. First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all of your cares yeah. upon him. And the reason why is because he cares for us. I thank God that the work of God is loving and compassionate. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with our infirmity. But when all part was tempted, just like we are, but yet without sin. Yeah. Let me tell you something. We got a master that understands every aspect of life. Yeah. We got a master that understands when you get mad. Yeah. You remember when Jesus got mad, he went into the temple. Uh -huh. When I said he turned it out and he showed out. Yeah. But he was still Jesus. Yeah. You know he said, you have turned a house of prayer into the den of thieves. Yeah. Jesus got to turn it over tables. And the money changers have to go. Yeah. So he understands what it's like when we're upset. The right. yeah. Bible says he was tempted at all points. Yeah. Just like we are. Yeah. But without sin. Yeah. Have you ever been tempted? Yeah. Have you ever been tempted to lay hands that one unholy? Yeah. Have you ever been tempted to use some language that's not necessarily covered by the text that says, building sweet water should not come out of your sand. <laughs> Have you ever been tempted to want to get somebody back, but the Spirit says, vengeance is mine. <laughs> you ought to be glad that you got a merciful master. Yeah. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, let us therefore come forward and before the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Yeah. This merciful master. Yeah, this merciful master has so much grace. Yeah. So much grace that he's always looking to help us. In and, and every time that he can. Right. This merciful master goes on a little further and the details to tell us in verse number five. He says, as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. Oh, I don't know about you, but I thank God for the deliverance light that God shines in my life. Is there anybody here? Have you ever lived in darkness? You ought to be thanking God for the merciful master. I thank God for hearing about the light. There's a light that shines all around us by day and by night. Songwriter said, Jesus, the light of the world, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Are y'all ready? I'm too glad you got a merciful master that allows the light to shine through you. It is good to know that he can take you from misery to mercy. Are y'all praying with me? Well, let us start trying to tune me up. I thank God for the magnificent God that we serve. But can I tell you that even more in this text? Because when you're miserable and you're bad, you got a merciful master. It's good to know that he can give you a miracle in the mood. Come on, read a little further with me. Give me to us. The Bible said that when he had thus spake, the Bible said that he sat on the ground. Can I go get country and tell you what he really did? The Bible said he sat on the ground. But you know, we would say he spit on the ground. Are y'all praying with me? The Bible said that he spat on the ground and he made clay of a spill. In other words, he made a mud pie. Are y'all praying with me? And you know, just like I would know, anytime we see spit coming out of a human being's mouth, the first thing we think that some journey to go with. And I need to tell you that Jesus was human, but he was also divine. Can I get a witness? The 
I'll take whatever Jesus gives. Even if it's his, his spit. I'll take Jesus' spit any day. Can I be a witness? The Bible said that he took a little spill and he mixed it up in the clay. And right now, I need to know we got more. Can I get one with me? Come on, boy, be a little child with me again. Have any of y'all ever made mud pies? All it takes is a little monster mixed in with a little mud. Jesus has just spit on the ground. It does not give us how much spit it was. Can I get a witness? But I found out something about Jesus. A little is a whole lot. If you're walking with Jesus, this is your work. Amen. Hey. 
Do you know that man? Do you know that man? 
It's good to know that we have a merciful master. A merciful master. And to make the mud in our life a miracle. Listen.
who needs the touch of this essential world.
the day of unleavened bread came on which the sacrifice must be made. And he said, Peter and John say, go be ready for the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, what will be made ready? And he said unto them, behold, when you enter to the city, that you shall meet a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he goeth. And he shall say to the master of the house, the teacher said unto thee, where the guest chamber while shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room furnished. They are made ready. And they went and they found that he said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and apostle with them, and he said unto them, with desire, I desire this Passover with you before I suffer. For I said unto you, I shall not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he received the cup when he had given thanks. He said, Take this. And divide among yourselves, I'll say unto you, I shall not drink from henceforth the fruits of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread when he given thanks. He broke it, he gave it to them and said, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the cup in the light now they have to suffer. The cup of the new covenant in my blood, even that which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man in the order has been determined for more to the man to whom he yields for trade. Let's pray for one another. Let's continue to reach out to one another. Call each other. Stay in contact. Eternal Father, again, because of your loving kindness and tender mercy, we were able to come together, worship, and adore you. We thank you, God, for every praise. It was to our God. For every prayer, it was to our God. For every act of worship, it was to our God. That's so we thank you. So now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide to the all-wise God, the one that has dominion, power, and glory, both now and forevermore. It is in the name.